keep all of this here. Yeah. 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 Seal down now. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so Seal uh, well, is a toolkit uh, to process sequencing data. Uh, what's special about it is that Seal has been built from the start to work on. Uh, um, if you haven't heard about it, actually, well, Annie's just mentioned it, but I'll say a little word about it during the presentation. Anyways. So, I'll, uh, I'll begin by explaining a little bit about why we decided to start working on Seal in the first place. Um, you've probably seen this argument uh, over and over again, especially if you work in sequencing. Um, the technology is advancing at a rate that uh, is superior to the rate at which the processing technology is advancing. This means that we can generate more sequencing data, or rather generate the data faster than we can keep up processing it, or at least in the limit this is where we're going. Um, to give you a number, uh, the Alumina high throughput machine, for instance, in a month can run uh, six flow cells <coughs> and generate about nine terabytes of raw data that has to be processed. So this growth phenomenon, the growth of data phenomenon, really, it is not unique to sequencing in and of itself. Um, over the past 10, 15 years, we've seen the rise of data driven businesses, like all these logos over here, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, and whatnot. Um, they've managed to get through somehow. Um, in a blog somewhere, I read that uh, in 2009, apparently Google was processing 24 petabytes of data per day. So that's 20,000 Illumina run directories every day. So what is the layers? Our problem of processing sequencing data really doesn't seem so scary. How do you think they do that? Well, what they did really is adopt <coughs> a new computational paradigm. So they decided to scale horizontally, use lots of machines. They wrote software that would accept and handle failures in hardware gracefully. Um, they spread the data over their entire cluster, but then they could move the computation to the data rather than making it travel over the network to some processing nodes. So these ideas really uh, have actually been implemented in a uh, open source solution, which is Hadoop. Um, Hadoop refactors all the logic that is necessary to distribute your work over a cluster and your data, and make the, the, the operation robust, so that if a node fails, your job doesn't fail. And it refactors all this into a framework onto which you can graft your application. Um, Hadoop is an open source solution and it's not a second great system. The sense that it's the system used by Twitter, by Facebook, by Yahoo, who was actually the original developer who released it into open source. So we thought maybe those processing sequencing data should try it as well. Um, about CRS4, well, we actually have the largest sequencing center in Italy. Uh, we're not large by any means, but we have a three Illumina ISAC machines, which I guess makes us about a mid-sized laboratory. Uh, we have sequencing capacity for five terabases a month, and since 2010, we've processed about 2,000 genome samples, 800 A samples, 100 exons or so, and a few chipset samples. So when we started, we actually did things in the typical way, let's say. So we have. Uh, HPC cluster, we have a clean patch system, and we used to submit jobs like this, like, like most people do, I suppose. And it wasn't really working so well for us. So having had previous experience with Hadoop, we decided to try to apply the same technology to processing sequencing data. But there's a catch. The software has to be written specifically for Hadoop. So that's how we started working on SEAL. Uh, when our first publication came out, <coughs> oh, gosh. okay, so SEAL is a uh, so distributed a toolkit for processing sequencing data, like I mentioned. All the tools within it are distributed and run on Hadoop. Uh, its goals from the start are to be scalable, both in cluster size and over data size. Uh, to be robust, and that means resilient to load failure and transient cluster problems, and to be sufficient for our that at least the data intensive sections of our processing platform. So at the time of the last publication, uh, CO actually consisted of one main tool, uh, the aligner. So a do based aligner that integrated the BWA code base into it, and so actually produced the produces identical aligner results, but does it does so over a loop, so it's scalable and distributable over many nodes. Um, simultaneously, Secal also identifies PCR duplicate. Um, PRQ, the other application, is just a reformatting utility because uh, because of the way our aligner is made, it needs to see both read and make in the same record. So this other application puts the data in this form. Since then. Um, we've been adding more tools to try to cover an entire processing pipeline. Um, from the start, uh, the sequencing machines, the Illumina sequencing machines generate VCL files. Um, these uh, need to be, from, from these, let's say, the reads need to be extracted. And although Illumina provides a utility to do this, the utility 
doesn't scale. Okay. So it doesn't, you can't distribute the work over your entire cluster easily. Um, so what we did, we wrapped the Lumina's own utility into our own application, which runs on a loop. And in each node, uh, a set of these processes run simultaneously and generate our QSIC files. It supports all the features of the original utility, so uh, it provides an equivalent solution as far as functionality goes, but with the additional benefits that the loop provides. Uh, we also implemented a demultiplexing program. Uh, again, uh, analogous to Illumina's solution, but uh, scalable. Uh, if in case you're not familiar, multiplexing runs, well, you attach a barcode to all the reads that need to sequence so you can mix them together in a single lane. And then you can still identify from which sample each one came. Or you need a program to then separate them into the original uh, that aspect of the original samples that you, that you sequence. Um, our application also supports handling uh, substitution errors in the barcode. And um, just to give you an idea, of, uh, I don't have actual plots or, or, or official experiments uh, to, to uh, show the performance, but uh, in our cluster, actually not even using the entire cluster, in 60, 70 nodes, we can move the flex of full cell in about a half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, recap table, this is an application, again, that runs in Adobe, which is used to collect uh, statistics about uh, empirical base quality. Um, this is used later on to recalibrate the base quality uh, so that then you can get a better uh, variant calls. Um, the, this application was modeled after J the JTK John Bayer's Walker, which was the original application we were using, and uh, supports a number of factors, uh, factoring the read group, base quality score, sequencing cycle, and uh, the loop type, so which base perceived when you're analyzing, and produces a table that is uh, compatible with the one that JTK uses, so we can actually take the output of this program and feed it into the subsequent um, <coughs> in the pipeline, which is still employed with the JTK. Uh, read sort, well, Hadoop actually, because it separates the data and uh, uh, processes it on multiple roles, uh, it actually ends up generating a lot of uh, output files, not a unique output file. Now we need to go, uh, since we don't have the entire pipeline implemented on Hadoop, we need to go back to, uh, let's say, legacy applications for the downstream analysis. Um, these legacy applications require us to sort all the reads by position and generate a map. Uh, to make the sorting faster, whether we're using SAM to sort, we used a Hadoop-based application um, that divides the work among all the nodes and so can do a parallel sort in that shorter run time. Um, file format support, uh, using Hadoop M, which is a, a new library for sequencing file formats. On Hadoop, we introduced support for QSEC, FastQ, and SAM to, uh, to seal, uh, both in output and uh, input. And also, we support for, for some codecs, uh, transparent or distributed compression and decompression of the data. Uh, Galaxy integration, uh, we have wrappers for these tools, for the seal tools. Um, these aren't directly in the seal project, but we're going to be releasing them to the, uh, the Galaxy toolshed that we use here. So, this allows us to um, draw our, our pipeline as a Galaxy workflow and run it to Galaxy instead of doing it through scripts. So, in conclusion, um, CL is in production use and it has been for, for over a year, almost two now. Uh, um, our experience has been positive, it scales well, it has significantly improved our throughput, and most importantly, I think, it has uh, lowered our operational effort because jobs fail less frequently than before, and they're relatively easy to monitor. And the robustness is very important for automation. Future development, well, there's lots of things to do. Uh, first and foremost, the complete compatibility with the loop 2, uh, complete the base quality recalibration step, which is important for our pipeline, um, optimization, there are always things to improve, and functional features, uh, we'd like to start processing our name uh, through our loop based tools, so that'll be an important feature to add. Um, other technologies like columnar file, columnar file formats would be uh, a nice addition, and supporting sequen other sequencing platforms, but that's probably something we won't be able to dedicate attention to. Um, Pull requests are welcome, of course. And uh, speaking of pull requests, um, you can find seal on GitHub at uh, CRS4 uh, slash seal. Um, more frequent activity you might find on my own uh, page. And we plan on having uh, another release soon, we just finishing up the documentation for uh, putting it through. And the website, if you want to look at it, uh, by loop seal at sourceforge.net. Thank you.